unchecked by any outside force. And we give you all the praise, call it done, fully expecting signs, wonders, and miracles, confirming the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let nothing separate you from the love of God. Let nothing separate you from the love of God. This particular scripture that I read this morning, these verses, contain one of the most comforting promises of God. Believers have always had to face hardship uh, in many forms. Sometimes it included persecution, illness, imprisonment, and even death. Now, one of the things that, that I've learned, in, and especially in my case, and I was thinking, uh, how, how, how would you say this? There's some things that I, I repeat. I don't know if you ever noticed when I get up, there's some things that I always say, or just about 90% of the time is going to come out of my mouth during a sermon. And the thing that I always say is, we all go through. Y'all heard that before. We all. See, sometimes we, 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 we lose the fact that just because a person looks good, because they're dressed nice, because they're pretty, because they, oh, they're not going through. But we all go through. And you see what that does to us, that when we go through, sometimes fear comes over us because we feel like God has abandoned us. God, God is not with me. He, he's with other people, but he's not. Because if he was with me, I wouldn't be going through what I'm going through. But what you have to understand is that God is always yeah. there. Yeah. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake. I'm there. But see, what we do sometimes, we let things separate us yeah. from God. He never leaves us. We leave yeah. him. Right. And, and that's what we've got to understand. But, but this particular scripture reaffirms that God's uh, profound love for his people, no matter what you go through, no matter what you deal with, God will never leave you. He will never stop loving you. He is always there. There is nothing like the love of God. Yeah, yeah. See, when you've got that love, you know it. When you when you've got the spirit on you, you know it. You 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 look different. You walk different. When you know God is with you. That, see, when you know God is with you, you have power and you have strength. You can do things other people can't do. See, some somebody with God with them. They can walk right by you. You talking about them like a dog. But they know who God is. They can hold me in Because God is with me. The Bible says in John 3 and 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When God is with you, you, you remember the story in the Bible? The Bible said that when uh, Samson took his head out of Delilah's lap, that when the Philistines came up on him, that he went out as he always did. But he shook himself, and he didn't know that God had left him. See, sometimes you, you, you know when God is not. See, you know when you have walked away from God. But it's not the fact that God has walked away from you. It's when you walk away from God. Here's the thing, when you walk away from God, uh, from that relationship, you become powerless. You, you see people that, that act like they don't have hope, it's because they don't have that relationship with God. And you lose it, you lose that, that power. But here's the other thing that you've got to understand. How many of y'all know that none of us deserve the love of God? I know, I know, Lord Jesus, that we don't deserve the love of God. But because his love for us is unconditional, it doesn't matter, oh, Lord Jesus. See, the, the reality is when somebody says it doesn't matter what you've done, 
See, some of some folks in here know what they've done. And you know that God still loves you. He, but we don't deserve the love of God. Just because you go to church, just because you study your Bible, just because you go to Bible study, just because you on this committee or that committee, just because you help the pastor with, with this or that, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, that don't mean you deserve the love of God. When you look at it, God loves us. God loves us because of who he is and because he is love. He, it, it, love is a characteristic of God. So you do not deserve the love of God. God's love is totally unconditional. See, it's, it, it, it's by grace. It's by grace, Bishop. You, you didn't deserve it, but yes, he gave it to you. See, some people have a job right now that you don't even this, you you don't even know how to do the job. You don't even know how to work. You 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 mess up every day. You don't know, but by His grace, yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave you the job. See, yeah. you didn't deserve it, but because of your relationship with God, yeah. and it's the same way when we look at the fact that God has saved us. Mm, Lord have mercy. I thank oh Lord Jesus. I thank God that He saved me. I thank God, and, and not because of anything that I've done. The Bible says, the, the Apostle Paul said, it is a gift of God. In Ephesians two and seven, he says, for by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See. You understand that when you were out there in the streets doing what you wanted, now most of us, I don't know, Lord, you like me, you the guy, you can't do it no more. You can't go and run like you used to run at the club. You can't do it no more. But when you used to do it, when you was out there getting drunk, smoking weed, talking about, I ain't never going to nobody's church and let some pastor take, see, even then, the Bible said that God committed Is what the man is saying. 
that even though she may have caused me all kind of headaches, so even though she may not have done right, I still love her so much that I'll give her. See, see, God loves us more than a father loves a, a son or a daughter. We, we know that our mother and our father loves us, but, but God loves us much, much more. The Bible says in Luke 11, it says, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will you give him a serpent? Ye, if ye being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit or give them the Holy Spirit that asks you? See, God will give you whatever, whatever you ask, whatever you need, he'll give it to you unconditionally. God don't say, well, if you, you know, Hey, well, you was acting up. You know how, Father. No, no. If you call upon me, is what he said, I will hear you and I will answer you. The, the Apostle Paul is the writer of this particular text. And, and no person apart from Jesus Christ himself has shaped the history of Christianity like the Apostle Paul. Paul presents the good news. Salvation Salvation is available to all, regardless of a person's identity, his sin, or his heritage. God is, 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 is the same with all of us. Our, our text is found in Romans 8 and 35 to 39 that I read this morning. But if you just go back up when you get home to that 28th verse, it, it says this. It says, and we know that all things work together yeah. for to for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, one of the greatest assurances of God's love in all the Bible is two qualifications, and it has two qualifications attached to it. Yo, God, what's the word on how I'm looking? It, it's not for everybody. And everybody think that they can just, but it's not for everybody. He says, we know that God causes all things to work together for good, but he causes it to work together for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Now, the question this morning is, do you love God? No one loves God perfectly in this life. That, that is, that, that's not the question. We all know that there can be a uniting love with a wife and a husband. Uh, or mother, or father, or a friend, uh, without the love being perfect. Now, when I was reading that, I said, you gotta explain that, because when you tell people you don't love God, or God's not looking for you to love him perfectly. See, you gotta understand that sometimes in a relationship you don't agree. It doesn't mean you don't love the person, it just means that you don't agree. So I'm gonna throw this out as an example. Let's say that there's a husband and wife. And the wife says, uh, I thought you was gonna put the trash out. Mm -hmm. And so then the husband say, well, I told you I was gonna put it out later. Well, I want you, here go the wife, to put it out now. And the husband said, well, it don't hurt the woman. The wife said, well, I'll put it out myself. The husband said, well, I'll open the door. <laughs> See, this, that don't mean they don't love each other. <laughs> they just didn't agree. So what he's saying is that <clears throat> you, you may not love God perfectly. See, but the question is, all right, let me get back on track. because. Y'all might know who that husband and wife is in the example. I know y'all don't know who exactly who it is. But the question this morning, back to the word, back to the word. So the question this morning, is God your treasure? That, that's what he's really asking. Is, 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 uh, uh, is he your treasure? Because see, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. 
See, that, that is that there with your love. He, he was trying to persuade us to have our treasures in heaven yeah. and not on earth. He says, is God your treasure? The other question he says, have you been called according to the purpose of God? Uh, a, a call by God according to his purpose. And this doesn't mean you have to have heard the word of God. See, when you tell somebody that, 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 that God has called you, then, oh, you were sitting in church and, and the pastor gave the invitation and, and, and you came forward. No, no, no. See, that's not what he's talking about. Uh, what he's talking about is, is, is in verse 30 of that same passage of scripture where it says, for whom did he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called them he also justified. And whom he justified them, he also glorified. See, all those that are called, they're justified by God. So this calling of God is not a mere invitation, but a powerful, affected summons that woke you up from the slumber of ignorance and rebellion against God. See, God has to move on the inside of you where you have to say, I need God in my life. I, I gotta stop looking. See, nobody has to tell you something when you decide, hey, I need it. I need to turn my life around. If I want things to start working in my life, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to submit to the word of God. And then you are called by Christ. The, the Bible says, the way the apostle Paul put it, he says, we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Gentiles foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greek, Christ, the, the power and the wisdom of, you got it. You got something on the inside of you that nobody else has. When you get that, you got the power of God and you can do anything. The Bible, our scripture today says, let nothing separate you from the love of God. Because when you are separated, you don't have that power. The apostle Paul was saying, let who shall separate us from the love of God? The answer is, no one and nothing can separate us from the love of God. Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He says, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, and we are counted as sheep before the slaughter. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? The answer is no one and nothing. No, no one can separate you from the love of Christ. But see, the answer is not who shall keep us from Christ or keep Christ from loving us, but who or what will keep us from loving him. See, you got to love somebody with you. Somebody, you got to make it for your mind. It ain't all about me. I just don't want to receive everything and not give. God, I love you. God, I thank you. See, when you love him, you walk by yourself. You don't have to get in front of people and talk about the goodness of God. When ain't nobody watching, when you're in your backyard, you just walk and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, I just thank you that I made it this far. I, Lord, I thank you that you watched over my children. Lord, I thank you that I didn't turn out like so-and-so. Lord, I thank you that I can walk and I can... Lord, I thank you. Lord, I love you for all the things that you've done. Lord, when I look around my life, when I look at all the things, Lord, I could have been dead and gone, sleeping in my grave. But Oh, no, I ain't no death, no any other creature shall be able. 
able to separate me from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus. See, one of the things that you got to do, somebody said, well, brother, how do I keep that? You got to walk in the spirit. You got to get out of the flesh. You got to walk in the spirit. See, some people try to walk into the world because they like the money. They like the fame. They like all those material things. But what he says is that you got to walk in the spirit where you got good health, where you got your mind, where you can move under your own power, where you can do the things that you want to do. The Bible says when you try to walk in the world and you try to walk in the spirit, they're contrary one to the other. The Bible says for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flood. And these are contrary one to another so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. But when you led by the, when you give up the flesh, now the works of the flesh shall manifest, which are these, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, uh, adultery, envy and murder, drunkenness, revel, and such a life, and which I have told you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But let me tell you what you get when you walk in the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, Against such there is no law. If we walk in the spirit, and let us also be walk, let we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. I don't care what you're going through, what you're dealing with. If you stay with God, He will bless you all the way. You gotta stay with God. Somebody said, brother, what what is this worldly stuff you're talking about? See, we want money. We want fame, we want position, we want this or that. But the Bible said that no man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, as he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and man. The Bible in 1 John says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Let me tell you something. God says, love me. Do a matter of fact, the greatest commandment is, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy heart. And the second is similar to it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. I looked it up to say, why? And the Bible said that he 